Welcome to your first scratch game, Star Hunter, a fast-paced underwater treasure hunt. Just follow the simple steps in this video to build the game, then challenge a friend to beat your score. This game is to collect as many gold stars as you can. Use the gobo to collect the stars but watch out for deadly octopuses. You'll need to move quickly to succeed. The main sprites in the game. Gobo. Move the gobo around the screen with your computer mouse, the gobo sprite follows the mouse pointer. Octopuses. The octopuses patrol the seas but they swim more slowly than you. If you touch one, the game is over. Stars. These appear one at a time in random places. Touch a star to score a point. Under the sea. Star Hunter is set in the deep sea, but you can change the backdrop to anything you like. Ready? Let's code. We'll program the gobo to move wherever the player moves the computer mouse. The blue motion blocks control the way sprites move. Click on the Go to Mouse Pointer block and drag it to the right part of the screen. Now select the yellow control button. And look for a Forever block. Drag it to the right and drop it over the blue block. It will wrap around. Next, select the Events button. Look for a block with a green flag. This block starts the game when you click the green flag. This block makes the gobo move with the player's mouse pointer. This block makes the block inside it repeat over and over again. Now look at the top right of the stage, you'll see a green flag. Click this to run your script. Move your mouse and watch what happens. If you followed all the steps, the gobo will move with the mouse pointer around the stage. Well done! You have created your first scratch project. Let's add some more things to the project to build a game. At the moment, the stage is just a boring white rectangle. Let's create some atmosphere by adding scenery and sound effects. To change the scenery, we add a backdrop image. To the left of the sprites list is a button to add a picture from the backdrop library. Click it and look for Underwater 2. Select the image. The backdrop will now fill the stage. The backdrop is just decoration and doesn't affect the sprites. Now, we'll add a bubbling sound to the Godo sprite to make it sound like we're underwater. Highlight the gobo in the sprites list and then click the sounds tab above the blocks palette. Click the speaker icon to choose a sound from the library. Look for bubbles in the library. Add new script to the Gobo sprite, but leave the old script in place because you need both. The new script repeats the bubble sound, the play sound. Until done, block waits for the sound to finish before letting it start again. Run the game to hear the sound effect. The game needs an enemy to make things more interesting. Let's add an octopus with a deadly sting. The octopus will patrol the stage, moving left and right. And the player will have to keep out of its way or the game is over. To add a second sprite to the project, click the icon shown below to open up the sprite library. Choose the octopus. The octopus sprite will appear in your sprites list. Add the script to the octopus sprite. This block runs the script when the game begins. The forever block repeats everything inside. Motion blocks are control the way sprites move. This block stops the octopus from moving off the edge of the stage. Now run the script. 
The octopus will patrol left and right, but you'll notice it's upside down half the time. We can fix this by adding this block. So far, the octopus and gobo move through each other without anything happening. We need to add a script to make them stop moving when they collide. Collision detection is very important in computer games. Highlight the octopus and drag a yellow, if then, block to an empty part of the script's area. Now add, touching block to the top of the, if then, block. Click the drop-down menu and choose, Gobo. This script will help the octopus detect the Gobo. Choose Control. In the Blocks palette again, and add a Stop All Block to the middle of the, If Then Block. This will stop all action, if the octopus is touching the gobo and ending the game. Now, add the, if then blocks, you've built to the octopus's main script, placing it carefully after the blue motion blocks. Also, add a, wait 0.5 seconds before the loop. Run the project. The wait block adds a slight delay before the octopus starts moving. This block detects a collision. This block ends the game when the sprites collide. Let's add more enemies to the game, but to make things more challenging, we'll make them move in different directions. We can tell each sprite exactly which way to go by using a block that works like a compass. Add a purple, set size, block to the top of the octopus's script, after the, when clicked block. Set the octopus's size. Add a purple, set size block to the top of the octopus's script, after the, when clicked block. Set the octopus's size to 35% to make the game a bit easier. Then add, a point in direction block. Octopus's direction. To change the octopus's direction, click on the window in the, point in direction block. and type 135 in place of 90. This will make the octopus move diagonally. Now, we can duplicate our octopus to create more enemies. Right-click on the octopus in the sprites list, or Control-click if you have a Mac, and choose Duplicate. Copies of the octopus sprite will appear in the sprites list, named Octopus 2 and Octopus 3. Each will have a copy of the first octopus's script. To make the octopuses move in different directions, change the number in the point in direction block for each new octopus. Leave the first octopus sprite's direction as 135. But, set octopus 2 to 0 and octopus 3 to 90. Run the project and try to avoid all the enemies. If it's too hard to stay alive, make the octopuses slower, by lowering the number of steps in there, move blocks to 2. Changing this number, adjusts the octopus's speed. Remember to change the script for all three octopus sprites. Run the project.
For more variety, let's make one of the octopuses set off in a random direction. To do this, we use a green pick random block. This is Scratch's way of rolling a dice to generate a random number. Choose operators in the blocks palette to find the block and add it to the first octopus's script. Type minus 179 in the first window. Type 180 in the second window. Run the project a few times to see the octopus choose different starting directions. In many games, the player has to collect valuable items to win points or to stay alive. In Star Hunter, we use gold stars as underwater treasure that the player has to collect. We'll use random numbers again to make each star appear in a new place. Click the Choose New Sprite symbol in the Sprites list and choose the Star Sprite from the library. The star sprite will appear in your sprites list. Add the following script to star. This script will make the star move to a random new location whenever the gobo touches it. The green blocks create random numbers called coordinates, which Scratch uses to pinpoint locations on the stage. The if then block checks whether the gobo is touching the star. The go to block only runs if the answer to the question is yes. The forever block repeats the blocks inside it. You can add a sound effect that plays when the gobo touches a star. First, make sure that the star is selected in the sprites list, then click the sounds tab above the blocks palette. Click the speaker symbol to open the sound library. Choose Fairy Dust. Now, add the Play Sound Block to the star's script. And choose Fairy Dust in the drop-down list. Insert the Play Sound Block into star's existing script. Computer games often need to keep track of vital statistics, such as the player's score or health. We call these changing numbers, variables. To keep track of the player's score in Star Hunter, we'll create a variable that counts the number of stars the player has collected. With any sprite selected, choose, variable. Click on the button, make a variable. A pop-up box appears asking you to give your variable a name. Type score in the box. Make sure the option for all sprites is selected. This option makes the variable available for every sprite. And hit OK. You'll see a new set of blocks appear, including one for the score. Make sure the box next to it is checked to make the score appear on the stage. The score counter will appear in the top left of the stage but you can use the mouse to move the score display. We want the score to start at zero and increase by one each time the gobo touches a star. Select the star sprite, and add this block to set the score to zero at the start of a game. Add this one to make the score increase when the gobo catches a star.
Now click the green flag to run the script dot and see what happens when the gobo collects each star. See if you can collect stars without bumping into an octopus. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn more about Scratch programming, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be creating more tutorials on different Scratch projects. Thanks for watching.